Yeah. Just like they say, stand for the judge. You stand for the defendant. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. 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 We'll stand when we have to. We'll stand when we want to. Yeah. I like that. It's souvenirs. We're making history here, Lee. Exactly. I've been pulled out of a few monuments. I always take my own body. I said I'll survive in Washington. Bro. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I went to court today in court support for Miss Daisy, and things went pretty well. Um, it was interesting to watch the DA scramble around. <laughs> he seemed a little insecure in his position. The judge seemed pretty supportive. It was great to see, um, and it was great to see the amount of people that showed up for the support. Everybody was here for her. So. First, we're here for the ongoing saga of Daisy Bram, and uh, it was ultimately a continuance. We had a scare where the uh, assistant district attorney essentially dropped a dime on our witness, the Honorable Dr. Gwen Courtney, who has done amazing things with high CBD, non-psychoactive parts of the cannabis plant. Um, the scare was that there would have been federal agents in court today from the DEA actively investigating perhaps his medical license for his testimony last time. Uh, I was glad to say and see that the federal government, at least in the open, was not in the courtroom today and wanted no part of following up on the supposed investigation, at least today, and hopefully never, because they know it's wrong and Dr. Courtney is well within his rights to some of patients. But that being said, uh, the issues continued until Dr. Courtney's a lawyer can uh, come and advise him. Prelim. I suspect Judge Riley is uh, going to rule in our favor in time when he's given the opportunity to do so. I think he's seen through the transparent, or seen through the transparent uh, air that the DA's office has put on. Just for today, we're seeing a uh, Daisy Brown case and we're doing court support. I strongly urge anybody that can make it to court to support people that are fighting cannabis crimes and to just be there for them in any way that you can. You don't always have to give your money, but sometimes showing support is one of the greatest things that you can ever do. So, everybody, you got to stand up for your rights. Hello, we attended the court hearing today for Daisy Brown. Uh, it was continued over. Uh, I saw some injustice going in the courtroom where the district attorney were using private confidential conversations between the client and the attorney and tried bringing it in, up in court and Mike Levinson did a great job, addressed the issue, kind of pulled the DA to the mat for using privileged conversations in the courtroom. Um, that was one injustice that happened. Then there's the issue with Dr. Courtney coming to testify before the court in Daisy's behalf and um, now he's having to look at protecting his own rights and his business license in order to defend Daisy. He has to now hire an attorney to represent him in court to make sure he doesn't violate his own rights and lose his medical I'm license. Victoria, and, and then I'm here at uh, court support for Daisy Brown. And the court the hearing itself was really interesting. We got to hear the prosecuting attorney try to admit privileged information into the record between Daisy and her attorney. So today and is March 7, 2013, and I had what was to be the continuation of the preliminary proceedings. Um, but it uh, turns out that an unexpected turn of events, the prosecuting attorney, Mr. Jeff Greeson, um, after the last preliminary proceedings, took it upon himself to uh, make contact with his member, his federal employees, or his Fed contact is. Um, and there has now been an uh, investigation of sorts on the court in regards to the history of the and cannabis and so I, I was sort of taken back. I, I feel like a prosecuting attorney in a county like DA should probably spend more of his time dedicated to his cases than contacting various individuals in an effort to tackle, really. Um, but aside from that, uh, that's that, uh, you know, it's, it's only a minor stay. So Dr. Courtney has retained a certain Tony Sarah, which. Uh, <laughs> which is quite impressive. So uh, we're going to be setting the preliminary is sort of an kind of a holding pattern. We're not quite sure what the date will be for the actual continuation of the prelim because uh, Dr. Courtney needs to invoke some of his amendment rights. So um, 
But we spent more time uh, discussing the attendance of the NA and AA meetings. Um, the, uh, Mr. Jeff Grayson um, has taken it upon himself to make this a very personal matter. So the scrutiny over the NA logs and whether I'm attending the meetings and how many a day and how many a week um, is a bit of a waste of the court's time. And I feel like the judge felt that as well, you know, during this slanderous tirade in which he mentioned, you know, all of the key points, all the things that would make you think I am this drug addict, child abuser, unfit person, mother, citizen. Um, I, I think that they just don't pan out and I feel the desperation that the harassment draws. I feel a very strong personal animosity and I feel like a lot of the slander that he's What about the, the power of being accused? You know, it's just just the fact that they mentioned that this might have happened causes right. a know, rift in the community. No well, one of the things that he mentioned during his tirade was that he had been informed by someone who worked in the court that they had overheard a conversation between myself and my attorney. Whoa! Excuse me? Hearsay? Hearsay, hearsay, and that the people, that's the people of the state of California for whom Mr. Jeff Grayson is representing in my prosecution, the people are concerned um, about me. The, the people are not concerned about me. Mr. Grayson is not concerned about me. This is, this is just more slander and more personal vindictive attack. And I'm not really sure if the state bar is, um, would be so pleased to know that there's potentially vindictive prosecution happening. And it's not uh, the fact that I feel prosecuted, it's that matters have become quite personal. Um, so we will pick another date for prelim and continue on our merry way. All of the support that was here today was wildly fabulous. Um, the judge clearly noticed that his entire courtroom was full. They had set up a, set, a, set a special department for a whole day for me and my proceedings, and we filled the courtroom. And they notice us when we come through security. They notice us when we stand in the hallway. Pretty much, we run the courtroom. Everything is ever. It's a small enough town that it has such a resounding effect. It's unbelievable. And it's not just the numbers; it's the presence. It's the fact that no one's intimidated. No one's quietly, meekly standing around. and stands proudly. And everyone um, is dressed nicely and acts nicely. And so there's really not really much they can say. So.